say, she say, we say, I say, hearing out them points of views when I see it my way. Yes, it knows, yes, it knows, maybe so's, probably not. Shills and coulds, do's and don'ts, your rules and won'ts is how you rock. Politicians and religions on your house or are you ready? Is you married? Is you single? Meta interest when you mingle, turn out to be someone you into. So, how long before the bed get wrinkled? When they trippin', is it time out or do you whip them? Opinions and decisions, hunches, intuitions May or may not get it, cause people's experience different Check the prejudice, set the dough Take the time you give the flow Tell the truth if it's sweet or sour Cause the hour we spittin' that fire Oh we Hello everybody how are you? Good night. How are you? Is it a good night tonight? Oh, I see all the bailiffs is in the house. What's going on? What is going on? Oh, we got some stuff to talk about today. Okay, so y'all know we got some stuff to talk about today. So let, let me go through a preview of it. So y'all know y'all heard the people that went to the, you know, the courthouse today with the jury selection and everything. Okay, so I heard that uh 29, I think, has been they went through like 65 people 29 been dismissed or something like that and i think it was a total pool of 100 or something like that and they were saying that the judge wanted to start off like with 35 i don't know how that's going to go but he has denied the motions which i i kind of figure he was because the motions were so good i knew that he was going to de deny them because if he if, if that was the case <laughs> if the if if all these motions as good as they were that were submitted that would that would make r kelly look good in the light and so i knew that he was going to deny based on that i i, I basically kind of said that i knew that they were good but i knew he was going to deny them because they were good you know what i mean but i personally really don't believe he looked at them i mean look at the one that jennifer um bonjean submitted with the uh the opposition larry was in there the video and all that like, she had his old whole trial transcript in there. She had everything in there. She put, submitted those things in there just in case to set up things for appeal, appeals and things of that nature, right? She had uh, those things uh, set up in there. That's what motions are about. They're about what they can add in for trial to fight a defense. But then again, it's also things that is good that you can put in for if you need to appeal some situations and some things. It's nothing new. Uh, that they were going to deny all the motions that the defense put in, right? And at this point, they kind of probably know that. They know that anything that they put in, and we ought to know, right? We ought to know that anything that they put in that they're going to deny. This is one of the reasons why I really wanted the billboards, right? Because people had to go to the courthouse today and get uh, uh, selected for jury or get dismissed. And they have to see these things as they come up off the freeway to come to the courthouse and things of that nature. This is one of the reasons why I was telling everybody signage is everything. Signage is everything. You know, somebody can see something and they can be like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? And things like that nature. This is what I was trying to get through to the uh, supporters. But then what we deal with on these internet streets is that anybody come up with any thing that is not uh, uh other persons we have what's called haters you know people hate on you and, and, and unfortunately it's not always the people who you are in disagreement with or you don't rock with sometimes it can be people hating on you that you thought you were all right with right and these are the things that happens right when people throw a monkey wrench in your thing you have to question yourself what are they motive and then we have stuff like this happen now, what if, hypothetical, uh, three weeks ago, right, uh, if there wasn't, now, hear, hear me out before I get into the heat of, in, in meat and potatoes of this, uh, of this courthouse, but I want to go through these, this motion and that was denied, and I want to go through the people, which is us, right? All of us are the people, and all of us are supporters, okay? So... If you are supposed to be supporting this man and some, and you have an idea and people rocking with your idea, but then you have someone slashing your idea that's supposed to also be a supporter, you have to question the motives of people out here, right? 
Because all I can think about when I heard about him denying the motions and the jurors and, and they didn't pick any was how many jurors could have actually potentially saw the billboards if we had them, whether they was coming or going or whatever. You know, what effect could it have on people? Because you have to understand that all these people that have seen Surviving R. Kelly, they need to see the narrative being changed. And if they can't see it, they're thinking that they're doing a good deed by supposedly helping these fake victims for profit, right? So you have to understand this is this is what happens. So when you are a supporter, you shouldn't allow anyone to discourage you from doing anything that you think you want to do or you want to do in, in, in terms of helping. Now, one of the things that I found to be uh, interesting is that I thought my work that I've been on here for three years spoke for itself. You understand what I'm saying? Whether I supported bloggers, whether I super chatted, uh, cash app or whatever, or even my donations that I did publicly. I thought all my work uh, was solidified. And it was so easy for people to doubt my work, even though they seen it publicly and people run with it. And then the next thing you know, we don't have billboards or at least enough for two. Right. And now we find ourselves in this situation again. We have supporters, doubting supporters. And, we, and for the first time in a long time, I'm going to honestly say it's not the opposition's fault because the opposition's doing exactly what they're supposed to do. In the meantime, it was the people over here who did um, the uh, infiltrating and, and who did the um, what did you call that? Um, you know, stopped it from happening. Right. By putting out bad word and bad press and bad uh, and solidifying it and lying and all these type of things. Because once you realize how somebody moved and you say something, it, it's, it's lying. It's lying. And I, I, I'm just baffled about, about the lies that were told on me or whatever. Because I don't have a history of it. And I've shown people, thousands of you, right? But that's neither here or there. I just wanted to say that again. You know what I'm saying? And in, in the midst of rubbing it in y'all face, yes, this is true. This is true. But I said that to say this is what the hell happens. When you don't allow people with expertise to do exactly what they tell you to do, this is allow this shit to happen, right? Because the potential jurors, right, they see certain now. They see things, right? They see things on these internet streets. They see things on Surviving R. Kelly. They see things, right? And this and signage can be things that we can express that they don't know. You know what I mean? They don't know. They don't know uh, the lies that these alleged accusers have said. They don't know these things. They don't know how people are being paid to uh, be an opposition or a non-supporter you know, to support the women and all these other things. They don't know that, right, in spite of, okay? Because when you know better, you definitely do better, right? So I, I just find that to be interesting, and I just wanted to, you know, kind of throw that in your face. Yes, I did. But also not in a bad way, in a way for you to get mad and do better, in a way for you to get mad and say, okay, you know what, I get it now. This is something has got to be done. You know what I mean? This is in a way, in a good, I told you so type of way though. Okay. Not in a bad way. So, uh, we had a couple people that went to the courthouse today, right? And they often go to the courthouse when he had trials and stuff like that. And they do the best that they can. And they were saying something about the jury selection. And then I know some other people who, you know, live in a nearby area and was there and said some things about the jury selection. But the, one of the things that the two, bloggers on YouTube said that they say that Robert looked really good. They said, consider what he was looking like last year. He looked really good. It's like he really succumbed to himself. You know what I mean? They said that he was buff, that he seemed like he's been working out. Um, they said he was looking good. His suit was looking good. Not that it was looking bad the last time, but you know, they said he was well groomed and everything. They say he was engaging, and the um, jury selections and things of that nature. They said he was really involved. He was really looking good or whatever. They said he's been definitely working out, okay? Lost the fat, 
build the muscle. So that's good and that's confident or whatever else because it can be a long fight. He don't know if he got to go through all the appeals. He don't know if he's going to win this one. He got to go through all the appeals. He does not know. Now, one of the things I can honestly say to people is that I have seen people, and I'm honest to God, I have seen people have multiple federal cases, lost them all, went to an appeal, and won, and got set free. I have seen that happen. You know what I mean? So you have not lost, or no, there's no losers until you actually exhaust all of your um, appeals. Now, one of the things that you can do, being a supporter um, or whatever, okay, one of the things that you can definitely do is that you can definitely um, express yourselves, okay? You can express yourselves because the one that I, I, I would never want no one to say, free R. Kelly. Right now, I would want people to challenge themselves on being fair, you know what I'm saying, and what the law is. And what it's supposed to mean and what it's supposed to be. Now, I think that um, Bonjean's argument with the uh, the jury selection and as far as people su uh, seeing surviving R. Kelly was a very great one. And I'm telling you, I really do not believe that judge read that shit. I, he told him he, he did it orally. I don't believe that shit. I do not believe that he did shit orally. I do not believe that. I don't believe, because he had to say it again in court for them to even know, because this is how the people who went there today were saying, he said he denied it. How you going to deny something nobody know you denied the shit? You get what I'm saying? So I'm saying that to say the man is up in age, and that, that was a lot of shit for him to read. But I'm thinking that she probably put that in there because even though whether he read it or not, she has to set her client up, not only just try to win the trial, but try to get a good appeal grounds uh, on, on his behalf, okay? Because, you know, to have a documentary, and, and you men, I want to talk to you men for a minute. You men, you really have to stand up and, and, and show up and show out. Not because you're a fan of R. Kelly or Bill Cosby or any of that nature, but you have to show up and show out because it can be you. So the believe all women stuff is, is really discriminating against you, okay? It's really discriminating, and that is a, that's something for you to take heed to, okay? Th I'm just saying. Um, I, I don't believe the judge read anything. I believe he's an 85-year-old man. I believe that was just more overwhelming than what he can actually do, and I believe he just said, okay, I'm denying everything. Like, I, he, I don't even think he knew exactly what he denied. Um, they said that he was constantly, he called surviving R. Kelly, saving R. Kelly, which, hey, maybe he spoke it out of his mouth. Um, they said he was, uh, he, was, he was discombobulated with the number of jurors they were actually on, stuff like that. And, and being in his mid-80s like that comes with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, health uh, aging things, you know, things that you used to be sharp with, you kind of get a little bit on the tired side, you know, up in age like that. And so um, we really just have to hope and pray that when they go through all this, that this juror is not like New York, okay? We have to definitely do that. We definitely have to do that. Um, one of the things... Yeah, I'm her. I'm whole day. Yeah, they said that he was um, forgetting things and, um, you know, just being discombobulated a little bit. You know what I mean? And I'm hoping that they can get through this trial with him being coherent enough to be able to rule and preside over it and, and things of that nature. I'm hoping so. Um, a lot of jurors said that they could not be um, uh, unbiased. OK, and they couldn't be impartial because they seen the surviving R. Kelly. Um, they, and then the ones well, I think it was uh, Lady D said that one of the ladies said that she went her kids went to school uh, with uh, R. Kelly kids. And so she couldn't be um, uh, unbiased. OK, she said she couldn't be unbiased. So. I mean, it's one of those things, but let's 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 get into it. Let, let's just and, and that's just a lot of. Uh, it, yeah, they said he was he was doing a lot of sleeping and things of that nature, and and that's 
that's going to be, you know, I, I'm not going to say much. Okay. I'm not going to say much on that, but we got a lot. We got it. We can, we can talk about, right. And we're going to talk about some things. Okay. We got to talk about some things because we're going to get through this night. Right. So y'all know me, y'all know that I just went digging. Y'all know I go digging and searching and everything else. I mean, let me tell you, if I was a bum, I would be a good one because I'd be dumpster diving like hell trying to find all kind of documents and information. And that's exactly uh, what I do, okay? Now, me personally, for those of you who are new to my channel, okay, please like, share, and subscribe. Please hit the like button coming on in. Please make sure you do that, okay? You like to support the channel, there's the uh, means about how to go about doing it. You like to send me something, it's spitfire 18 at gmail.com. Okay, so now, if you like to send me something, it's in the about section. There's a P.O. box and the physical address as well. So now that we're going to sit up here and get into the meat and potatoes of this, right? We're going to talk about some stuff, okay? We're going to talk about some stuff. And one of the things we're going to talk about, and you're going to try to understand where it is that I'm coming from, we're going to talk about this man right here, okay? He was the 40th president. And you know, you said to yourself, spin fire, what does this have to do with it? Well, you know that I'm the queen of the breakdowns, right? You know I'm the queen of the breakdowns, and if I went here, you know where the hell I'm going with this, right? So he was the 40th, this is the late president, Ronald Reagan, the late 40th president of the United States of America, right? He is a Republican, a Republican president. He's an actor turned politician, okay? He did two terms and everything of that nature. His wife, Nancy Reagan, that was his wife and all that. She was the one that just said, say no, just say no to drugs, okay? And the war on drugs and all these type of things that came from his uh, wife, right? This is when we um, allowed uh, parents to raise their children, right? And they were doing drugs and it was all that. That was the biggest thing then, right? And we had this war on drugs and we had all these things happening and stuff, so on and so on forth. But like every president, right, like every president, they pick a, a justice, right, a federal judge. And he picked a judge by the name of Harold uh, D. Lennon Weber, okay? Lennon Weber is a Republican judge. He is a federal judge in the Northern District of Illinois, okay? He is approximately in his mid-80s. Um, it seems like I'm being... Okay. Put the light, hit the like buttons, get the likes up, y'all. Y'all got to get the likes up quick. Quick, get them up, get them up, get them up, get them up, get them up. Okay. He comes from uh, a situation to where he has come from an era to where he's down with Ronald Reagan, right? And Reagan had appointed him to be uh, a federal judge, and he, he it, I think he, he's been one since, oh, shoot, probably about, like, I think it's in the late 70s, early 80s, I can't even remember. But Lennon Weber has been a judge for quite some time, Right? quite some time but then there's a high profile case that was underway right a high profile case not r kelly at this moment but another high profile case of one of the uh biggest uh kingpins okay and a person that was the former founder of a gang called the disciples right and people have been talking about this case for so long because it was in the early 70s when all this stuff was happening. And he was apprehended in 1973, right? And, and, and Lennon Weber, well, let's see what he refused to do, okay? So who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about none other than Larry Hoover, right? Now, Lennon Weber just recently declined to resentence Larry Hoover, which was a big, big thing, okay? Now, in the era of Ronald Reagan, when you were arrested for street drugs and things of that nature, you were sentenced to crimes that, in time, that was so astronomical that a person can murder someone, can be out, and you still will be in just for doing selling some drugs. Drugs were... Um, the highest 
uh, punishment beyond murder at that point. And I'm not talking about justifiable murder. I'm talking about it could be a, a, a vicious murder, right? It could be a senseless murder. And you can do 10 years and 15 years or even 20 years or even 25 years in prison for a murder. But if you sold a whole lot of drugs or what they consider to be a certain amount, you can do life sentences just for that and no dead bodies right well that's one of the things that they were did to larry hoover and then while he was in there they tried to charge him with a murder uh while he was already sentenced to six life sentences for drugs right and that's a problem so the fast forward in time uh when barack obama came there was a lot of people you know having some issues about these people who are in jail for drugs but never killed anyone, and they're doing more time than people who have murdered people, right? They're doing the same amount of time that, you know, Ted Bundy would do or John Wayne Gacy, okay, or some of them other serial killers, right? So why is that? Why is all these people committing all these murders and took all these lives and, and damaged all these families, right, why is it somebody that is just selling drugs to people that they didn't make do drugs, they was already on them, uh, getting more time than them? And, and the citizens had started to speak, and during these um, campaigns for the, for the uh, Oval Office, people were bringing these questions up. And so Obama uh, was like, okay, we got to work on, um, we got to work on this, uh, people going to jail and, and the, and the time, and the crime doesn't fit the, the crime. You know what I mean? The, the, the crime doesn't fit the time that they get. So if the time is too excessive for the charge, well, that's a problem. But unfortunately before Obama got out of office, that could not be, uh, fixed, right? Because people were arguing, you know, the parties were arguing and fighting and, and they had other things going on and stuff like that. But Fast forward to 2018, 18, uh, eight years later, Ob uh, Trump signed, okay, the Sentence Reduction Act, all right? So that means that people who were uh, in jail for marijuana and crack and all this and that was, you know, nonviolent offenses uh, to get a sentence reduction, right? And people was like, okay, that's good because if you ain't kill nobody, you should not be doing more time than people who actually killed someone, whether it's manslaughter or not, whether they really meant to kill somebody or not. You should not do more time. Well, Trump signed that act, right? And even in the midst of Trump signing that act, and Trump is a Republican, you would have thought, right, that uh, Larry D. Lennon Weber would have supported it, not he rejected uh, to reduce Larry Hoover's uh, resentencing, and uh, it became a big known phenomenon. And you even got people who's supposed to be advocating for victims screaming, "Free Larry Hoover!" Well, well, wait a minute. Now that that's a, well, the, the hold up. You know what I mean? Because we have this thing that we want to say a woman who says she's uh, sexually uh, assaulted and she's still alive right and she gone on with her life and she didn't lose no limbs right is she supposed to be mentally scarred now mentally scarred is, is a real uh uh it's a real diagnosis right but at the same time it's hard for us to prove that right considering the fact that you know how to go about your life you know how to make money you know how to sue you know what i'm saying you went on with life and you're doing all these things right so your life couldn't be that much compromised other than you said something but then what happens when you have accused someone of a sexual assault and not only are they all alive but you're a superstar you know what i mean you a mega star and, and, and they're mad at you and they're scorned at you because you can't be uh, making to the top without making people mad. It's just not going to happen. Even if you end on your job, 
if you get a high promotion and you getting promoted and promoted and promoted, you're going to make people mad up, up when you climbing up the ladder. That's just the way it goes in life. You know what I mean? You will never be able to satisfy everybody. However, and there is a however in this sentence, uh, R. Kelly is now being presided, um, his case is being presided from Larry, Harry, uh, Lennon Weber, right? But I just find that to be very interesting that uh, he did not even sit up there and support uh, Trump's sentence uh, reduced act that was in 19, well, 2018, just about, what, four or five years ago. And so Larry Hoover has been in prison for about 50 years now, 50 years, and for selling drugs, and now they saying no, he can't get out, and 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 we we trying to figure out why, like why we had this act, but we got these district judges that are not abide by these acts. Like, what is it for us to take to make these district judges um, abide by the laws that we have in place? But they uphold it when it comes to putting black men away. Now here. The way is what I want to say, and, and, I, and I'm not trying to be mean, and I'm not trying to be uh, racist here, but a man this age has to have some form of racism in his body. You know, and it's not because he couldn't change. It's not because every man is like that, but because when you are in law, when you are a certain age, you were raised in a certain area. Like, there are certain things that even I am prejudiced about and maybe even probably even more racist about. Not trying, not deliberately, but it was because of the era that I was raised in. It was ways that we just did things and we didn't. And you can't sometimes turn that on and off. People want you to, but it doesn't work that way. So what people do, they just go quiet. They just mute themselves and not say anything. But their beliefs is still there. So an 85-year-old man who was probably in the heart of the civil rights movement and believed probably in segregation and things of that nature um, and probably was even in the times of Al Capone and all those things that was going on and probably didn't like Italians and blacks and things of that nature. It is kind of, you know, for him to say, okay, when it's a black man, no. Because one of the lawyers that they were talking about was McDavid's lawyer. Uh, I think it was Brinkley. They said that he had some tri uh, some some cases uh, about six, seven years ago in front of Lennon Weber, and Lennon Weber found him not guilty, let him go, and was acquitted. Now, people say, well, he wasn't found not guilty. He was acquitted. Isn't that the same thing when you get acquitted? You, the point, purpose is they didn't prove their case. Okay, I don't understand why people try to dissect the fact that the government didn't prove something. D not guilty don't mean uh, acquitted don't mean not guilty. Not guilty don't mean acquitted. Uh, OJ was acquitted. They tell you that in the meantime he was acquitted. In other words, he was he he. They couldn't prove that he done something. The government couldn't prove it. The people found him not guilty. That means he was acquitted. Whew. Opposite from convicted. All right. So, now that we have Lennon Weber and we know that he just rejected Larry Hoover, well, it's not even going to be a doubt in my mind that he was going to reject all of the defense motion with R. Kelly. I mean, I can't imagine this man at this age will let anybody black go free, especially a black man. He doesn't know R. Kelly music. He doesn't know who the hell R. Kelly is. Okay? So, but then we have something else going on, right? So we have some other presidents that happen, and you heard me talk about this stuff many times, right? This president right here, the 45th, that's right. This one right here, or oh, it's 44th, excuse me. So this one right here, right? This president. Now, this president right here, he uh, picked a federal judge, okay? He picked a federal judge, and... He picked a federal judge, and the federal judge that he picked 
was none other than Ann Donnelly, right? Ann Donnelly. Now, one of the things that's interesting to me is that this particular, uh, uh, this president right here, him and his wife had uh, a fixer by the name of Tina Chen. And you heard me talk about Tina Chen a lot. And who was Tina Chen? Well, she was the one that was, you know, the CEO of Time's Up. And in the midst of her being a CEO of Time's Up, she came up with the slogan that every other uh, women's organization is using, and that's called Believe Women, right? So we know that Believe Women is saying all men are liars, but you have to be a particular man, right? Because not all of them are going to be perceived as liars, all right? Well, Tina Chen got in some trouble because she didn't support the women when it came to Andrew Cuomo, right? Because he signed that bill into law, in New, the state of New York. So she didn't want to sit up there and go against them. However, because Tina Chen worked for the Obamas, right, and she came up with the slogan, Believe Women, she then gave up her position at Time's Up and started working for the Obamas' new uh, organization, right, just recently, right? But you have to understand something. These organizations are not by themselves, okay, they're not by themselves, right? They are in cahoots with, okay, uh, Me Too, right? They are in, and they, then they've joined forces with you, R. Kelly, right? All those type of things. But then there was something else, right? There was something else with this, and, and we know who was behind it. And all these organizations, whether it's Mu R. Kelly, whether it's Time's Up, whether it's the Me Too movement, there was some other things happening, right? There was some other organizations that's popped up. And it was the one that I just gave you recently called Joyful Heart, okay? Now, all these are organizations supposed to be for women who've been sexually assaulted and abused and all these type of things, right? And I had said the other day, like, how many women organizations we need? Because there's none for men, right? And if you do have an organization for men, good luck with trying to get that patent, okay? Believe me, I've tried. So now we have Joyful Heart. But then there is something that I found out about the Joyful Heart that I, after, you know, digging some more. Well, she got an award for Joyful Heart, right? So now we got people who saw Surviving R. Kelly, we have all these women's lib organizations. We have Me Too, that's was the founder is from New York. So, of course, if I found something in the state, I expect that state to bag uh, me up. And the, the political parties and the courthouses are bagging that organization up. But why is she bagging it up? Because after you do some research on her, you're not going to find her with the Me Too movement, but you are going to find her in the li women's liberation movement, and it's called Joyful Heart Foundation, where she received uh, an award and a certificate and an honorary um, a board member of Joyful Heart, okay? Now, why will a judge who has an award for such a foundation preside over this case thinking that she can be bias uh, free. Well, we know that she couldn't because she said it uh, during sentencing that she already made up her mind that R. Kelly, right? She already made up her mind that R. Kelly was uh, going to be sentenced to 30 years. She already had her mind made up. And that's problematic for all this to happen, okay? So they're denying people who seen uh, Surviving R. Kelly to be on the jury. They saying, so what? And then the, not only do these judges are affiliated with these women liberations movement or, or women's organizations, but they find themselves presiding over a sexual case, right? And so we found that a lot of these victims in these cases – have not been telling the truth, and yet, even on the stand, we realized that she even said that one of the victims was not um, 
I said, what, what can I say? She said, this is not credible. But she allowed that testimony to be stand anyway. Now, I can't help but to think it's because she was part of Joyful Heart. You understand? She already had her mind made up. Now, just think about it. How are you going to be a judge and took a degree, uh, uh, award from a sex crime organization that fight against sex crimes, preside over a man who is charged with sex crimes, how are you going to let him go? How are you going to sentence him little? She cannot do that. She was compromised from the beginning. And I've often told you they gave her this case for a reason. But one of the things that people fail to, uh, re fail to remember and don't remember is that a lot of times before the trial even started in the Eastern District of uh, New York, there were a lot of motions put in for bond hearings. They wanted R. Kelly to be out on bail and things of that nature and stuff like that. And all that kept being rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected. It was rejected so much that this judge right here in the Eastern District of New York decided to make a phone call, right? Because you remember, R. Kelly had... Um, Two, two federal cases, right? Chicago and New York, right? So even though R. Kelly had two cases, um, you know, that he was fighting, well, this judge right here uh, wanted to make sure R. Kelly didn't get out on, on, on uh, wanted to make sure R. Kelly didn't get out on bail, right? Wanted to make sure that no judge went against her ruling. So she decided to call the chamber's office of who? Lennon Weber, right? So you have to ask yourself, why would a judge that uh, not only did she get a, a award from Joyful Heart, a sex uh, crimes organization that fights against sex crimes and preside over a case with dealing with sex crimes, especially a high profile case, and often admitted that she got her mind made up and rejected every motion that the defense put in, why would she call the Northern District of Illinois so he would not be able to get a bond over in the Northern District of Illinois? And she told an open court that, and she said, oh, I called over there, and he's on the same page as me. Why would a judge do that? Why would a judge call out her district to make sure one person would not get bail, would not get him bond? And why would a judge lie to say that they're protecting the community when, in fact, he turned in his passport, he went to all the court proceedings, even the last one. And let's just say they said that he paid his way out of the state case in Chicago back in 2008. And let's just say he did. But he still came to court. You get what I'm saying? He still came to court. Now, we all know Robert do not like to fly. And we all know that he didn't run. He went to every court case. And they were mad because he was keep getting bailed. So what the feds do? They stepped in. They stepped in and they had no, they were not prepared. People say, oh, they've been watching him for a long time. No, they weren't. What they did was they got all of the discovery, the 3,500 material discovery from the state case in 2008, right? But before we do that, let's not try them in Chicago first. Mm -mm. We cannot do that. We got to try them in a Me Too state first. Because if we try them in a Me Too state first, it's going to send a message that he's guilty and that the Illinois state will pr or probably follow. So in other words, even though it's a federal case, these are two different jurisdictions. And if we, if we know that people follow suit. We know that if one says he's guilty we know another one gonna say well they did it then maybe he is guilty 
You get what I'm saying? And now he's going to have another case. So they wanted to something that they knew that they was going to solidify a guilty verdict. Because even in the Eastern District of, of, of New York, it came out uh, that they had people uh, that worked with the prosecutor's office on the jury. The majority of the jury seen surviving R. Kelly, okay? None of the jurors came out and did any interviews since. They were also sequestered, all right? And every motion that the defense put in, they lost, right? And this judge already had a hang-up on one of the attorneys from the defense side, right? And she made it seem as if she was being fair, which we know she could not possibly be fair if you were part and had a award from Joyful Heart, right, foundation, which is another women's live organization, as there are so many, right? Because I knew that this was a Me Too judge, and I couldn't find nothing on her that connected her to Time's Up, that connected her to Me Too, and I knew she was too white to be new R. Kelly because they the lowest one on the tone pole. So I tried to find out if she was part of LGBT, right? Because we know that that organization is behind all these organizations. But I couldn't. And considering the fact that on paper and on public record, she's married to a man. So I said, I'm going to find something on her that relates to these women's live. And sure enough, it was joyful heart. I had to look up what this organization and what this award was about because I had to dissect it and get all down up in it because I knew that it was something about sex crimes, women being abused, or something of that nature. And then she turned over to sit up here and call Lenny Weber. Yeah. So if for those of you who thinking that whether the blue or the red pill is the best choice. This is why I said I may be a Democrat, but I'm going to expose the Democrat. And I'm not going to be Republican either. I told you when it comes time to vote for uh, president, I'm voting for that one who don't have no money. Because I told you that the red and blue are really friends. Now, here she is, a blue, calling somebody that is a red and they on the same accord. They on the same accord when it comes to denying motions. But I believe he really denied it because he ain't read none of that shit, right? I really believe that. Now, all of this has happened. We've seen all this stuff happen. We know all this stuff going on. But what, what can happen now? Now, one of the things that came out that... They tried to spin us from finding out was they said that Jim Derrigatis wasn't going to be uh, a witness, and it was said that he's going to take the stand. Now, I'm hoping he don't plead the fifth. Uh, the ex-wife is supposed to be taking the stand. Now, for some reason, Geronda is taking the stand. Now, I'm believing that Geronda is taking the stand because Jim Derrigatis is taking the stand. And remember, she was in his book, right? And our, everything about the prosecution office, this spells appeals to me, where the prosecutor is engaging with witnesses outside of office hours, Speaking of things that are non-court related, you have people in working for the prosecution office on the witness. You have prosecutors making incognito emails and, and phone records. You have witnesses that stated on the stand that they misrepresented their age. You have people clearly stated that they say that they have uh, polygraphers. Polygraphers. Polygraphers that these people supposed to have to take a polygraph and they're using it against R. Kelly as if 
he was buying the tape and wanted to make sure he was lying when in fact it was the opposite. But everybody gets immunity. You have to understand why everybody gets immunity. Because they are guilty of crimes. But the crimes that they are guilty of is hypocritical to what they saying that they're trying to charge R. Kelly with. In other words, many of you said that he's a pedophile. I hear that all the time, right? He's a pedophile. He's this. He's that, right? And I'm thinking to myself, and I said, well, wait a minute. If he's all of this, right, if he's all these pedophiles and things of that nature, there's something that we just got to talk about, right? Let me get my fire back up here. There's something that we got to talk about, okay? Because I'm just like, okay, I'm not even for all this, uh, these people calling him pedophiles. Why does my fire keep going out? Um, they calling him pedophiles, right? And let's break it down now. Let's break it down. Okay. Let's break this down. Because y'all know I'm the queen of the breakdowns, right? You have this person right here, right? You have this person right here. Uh, the ex-wife, right? You have the ex-wife who comes on surviving R. Kelly. She was hogtied. She was, she dropped her baby when she seen the 2008 case. She did all this stuff, right? She had to ask to eat, right? She had to ask to eat and stuff. But she was, of course, choreographer. She was breastfeeding. She had to ask to eat. He wasn't there half the time he was on the road. You had to ask to eat. So when he wasn't there and he was on the road, you would call him to eat as opposed to just going in there and get your ass something to eat. Okay? He's on the road all the time. So if he's not at the house, you had to... Call him on the road, can I go get me something to eat when the refrigerator right there, as opposed to saying, this MF ain't here, I'm finna go get me something to eat. Like, but then you have someone that was on, on these YouTube streets that says she's worked with R. Kelly and for R. Kelly. She was the nutritionist. Now, what a nutritionist does is prepare food. So as Sharon Wimbush said that she was the nutritionist, did she have to ask R. Kelly, could Andrea eat? Because as long as she been on these YouTube streets, I never heard her say, I had to call R. Kelly to make sure I can prepare food for Andrea or for Kelly. I, 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 I never heard her say that. And I know you know who she is because you went back and forth with her because you addressed her on uh, a podcast. So I know you heard what she said out here about you on these internet streets. Oh, I pay attention to shit. I seen that fight that you got, that the word exchange you got with Sharon Winbush, um, Andrea Kelly. And you and, and Sharon ain't never said she had the eggs to fix your ass some food being a nutritionist. She never said she had to ask nobody to fix your ass some goddamn food. I ain't never heard her say no shit like that. Right? And you know who the hell she is because you, 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 you had a, a word exchange with her. Right? But then you turn around and you do some shit and you say shit, right? And you say 
that he did all this to you and you say stuff like well he uh he 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 he, he hog tied you and you had to ask to eat and you were so distraught when uh they the charges came because you didn't have you, you had no idea you almost you dropped your baby on the floor right but then all this was over with in 2008 you didn't get a divorce until 2000 what 12 y'all didn't divorce until 2012 right 2012 I, I believe if I'm not mistaken right so you got a divorce in 2012 so after his child pornography trial that he was found not guilty and acquitted on you stayed married to him but the thing is you didn't even file for the divorce he divorced you right now you mean to tell me your accuser or your abuser my excuse me your abuser divorced you you were so bad he don't even want to abuse you no more he just wanted to get rid of your ass your abuser your abusive husband because we all know statistically they normally don't be the one to file for the divorce because they so controlling but your abusing husband, the one that you said hogtied you and you had to ask to eat, divorced your ass, not the other way around. In the midst of his trial, in the midst of him cheating, in the midst of all of what happened, you still didn't divorce him. He ended up divorcing you, right? So at the, a, after you sat up there, after R. Kelly summons your ass to a divorce, yes, he summons her. It does make a difference on who divorced whom. Because whoever want to get seriously get out the marriage, that's who is the person that's really seriously fed up with it, right? You have three of his babies, and he still didn't want your ass. You said he hogtied you. And he still let your ass go. If he hogtied you, he should have just let your ass go. But he hogtied you. But he told people he don't know how to hogtie people. So you lied on this man. Then you finna take your ass into a courthouse and got these goddamn people convincing you to lie on the stand. But let me tell you something. Before I show your hypocritical statements and talk about all the stuff that you did. I want to ask you guys a question. It was said that Roshana Landfair would come to your house, help babysit your kids and all this and that and st be up under you. She stayed at you and Kale's home, right? To the point where y'all called her grand godparents or y'all was labeled as godparents. After she was already grown, I don't know how that shit happened. However, and there is a however in that sentence. Oh, yes, yeah, this is the queen going to break down. Make sure y'all get the lights up, please. Now, at this child that's supposed to be in this infamous P tape, right, that was in this trial from 2002 to 2008. Come on now. Come on now. I'm breaking this shit down. Come on now. Matter of fact, you know what? H how I'm going to break this shit down? What am I about to say? Y'all know I'm about to break this shit down. I'm not going to even play no drama music. Come on. Come, come on. I'm not going to play none because I'm on fire. I'm on motherfucking fire. Listen to this now. Check this out. Hear me? Because we ain't no surface level thinkers. You know I dissect shit, right? Now, this girl who stay at your house with your husband and you two supposed to be her god parents after she was born already help uh take care of the little ones that you had 
right? Right? But then, you didn't get a divorce to four years after that trial was over. Huh? Do I hear something? Did, did, did anybody say something? And he divorced you. He got rid of you. Your abuser that you claim abused you divorced you. Right? I ain't never heard no shit like that. However, there is however in the census. Four years after the trial over with, right, you had to have known who they said was in this infamous tape. But yet you still stay with them an extra four damn years after the trial and the girl still was putting money on his books while he was arrested fast forward to 2019 and everything and still in your life. Now this is supposed to be the girl on this infamous P tape that you said that your kids were damaged by. That you said that your kids uh, one of your kids want to commit suicide over or changed her gender. So you mean to tell me that this girl who's supposed to help babysit your kids is they saying that he was messing with, that was at your house helping you with the kids, and you stayed married to him after that trial and this girl was still coming around. Make that make sense, y'all. And then your abuser abu uh, your abuser divorced you. Not to mention, you was in a reality show later that year, early 2013. You was in a reality show called Hollywood Exes. Where you then found love and got married, remarried. But you making as if you are Kelly's, he's your ex-husband. But in fact, he's your ex-ex-husband. Because you're not even acknowledging the man you married from Hollywood uh, exes. Ain't nobody even highlighting that part. Because I'm thinking if you were that damaged and you moved on and you got remarried, how damaged could you have been? And you couldn't have been that damaged even after then because you went to R. Kelly's 2016 party. Why did you go to his birthday party of your abuser? The man who's supposed to be abusing the, the, the babysitter who y'all call the goddaughter who's still coming to the house five, four years after the tape was supposed to be over with. That he's supposed to pay the mama to go to the Bahamas and to say it wasn't her, but he, she's still coming to the house. What kind of parents, even in the midst of taking money, would still allow the child to come to the house even after they took the money? And not only that, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Not only that, you know that this girl was in your house and they accusing him of sleeping with her. Not only is you going to allow her to keep coming back to the house because of the accusations alone, but your husband ended up divorcing you. You ain't even divorced him over that. And you still went to his 2016 birthday party. That was just a few years shy of surviving R. Kelly. 2016 from 2019 ain't that far apart. 36 months. So what happened between those three years that made you and R. Kelly fell out so bad that you wish this man life in prison? Because when you were sitting up there, after you sit up there and talked about surviving R. Kelly, you was like, this is my baby daddy. So what, this is my baby daddy. I'm singing my baby daddy song. That's what you said in the car, singing happy people. Like, what kind of play y'all doing? Now, here I'm going to show y'all this. I'm going to show y'all this. Right? 
on me. I'm going to show y'all this and uh, remind y'all. I want y'all to see this real good. On me. I was like, okay, I don't know. You are Kelly now. I know you got a lot of girlfriends. We ain't gonna never be together, boo boo. I ran for him from two years. Like, mm mm. No, ma'am. Oh, no. I don't want to be your girlfriend because you got about 1,500 of those. And then one day, I don't know. He just wooed me and I looked. I was like, he cute. Okay, babe, we might be able to do this. Let me see what we working with. And it just seemed like overnight, it just turned into, and I think because we were friends first, that it was easy because I loved him as my friend. So to fall in love with your friend, it was just an easy transition. It wasn't one of those, okay, he's sending me flowers and jewelry and clothes and cars. It was like, dude, let's go to McDonald's. Let's get this little nine piece jumping off in a Coke and talk about playing basketball. So we just had that bond that was really, really cool. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me you is his wife and he allowed you to play basketball? But he had some girlfriends and they said they had to look away. That when they go play basketball, they couldn't look at nobody but him. But you his wife and had three kids. Oh, this is the breakdown, God damn it! Did y'all think the dragon wasn't going to break this shit down? Did you think the dragon wasn't going to break it down? <laughs> Yeah, y'all ain't caught that the other night. Oh, I can break shit down. That's what I do. See, everybody ain't gonna forget about this because you can play basketball with them, but the other ones could. No, oh, but keep on talking. Let's keep talking. And there you go. Next thing I know, we're getting married. We have our first daughter, Joanne. We go on tour. I'm knocked up again. We have Jaya. We go on tour. I'm knocked up again. We have little Robert. So our life, it just went from homeboy, homegirl, dancer. Homeboy, homegirl? What a possession at. Oh, okay choreographer fiance wife now we've got kids and nannies we got a bus with toys nannies nannies you had to ask to eat and stuff so i know they were helping the kids and stuff like that okay go ahead boys and cribs and extra security and i'm just wigging out because i'm like how did it go from a girl on the south side getting food from a soup kitchen to r kelly's wife those three children that we have we're out of love. Oh, really? Hmm. So it's like we did. We had good times, and that was my friend. And that oh, that's not what you were saying. You said that he hogtied you. He was abusive. And when you seen all this stuff, you fell out. And this is post. Now, this video is post-divorce. I just want to add that. At the end of the day, I lost my friend. You what? At the end of the day, you lost your what? Your friend? Not the friend that hogtied you and that you had to ask to eat. Not that damn friend. Girl. And it's hard to deal with. And I hope one day we'll get back there. Oh, so that's Hold what me. this is about. You couldn't get them back. I believe that. I believe that's what this is about. I believe that you tried to get back with him and he told you no. Mm. Interesting. The interesting shit. Now, let me ask y'all this before we conclude this, right? Let me ask y'all this. She's testifying, Roshanda testifying, and the mother testifying. And the mother used to drop Roshanda off at the house. Roshanda mother and her father used to be R. Kelly's drummer or in the band with R. Kelly. Now, how much y'all want to bet that they had a conversation about all three of them testifying? And how much y'all want to bet that they were actually working up numbers on what they can get if they sue and all this and that. How much y'all want to bet? I bet you before they even talk to the prosecutor, 
or the prosecutor got them all together and they all know each other, Gail. They all know each other. They all know each other. Did you hear me? They all know each other. I bet they had a meeting. I bet they talked about them testifying against him. They all knew each other. Remember, the girl used to come to her house. Interesting, isn't it? I bet you they did. I bet you they did. But we ain't finished. We ain't finished. We just had to sit up there and expose her ass. We just had to sit up there and expose her ass. Because I just exposed Lennon Weber and Ann Donnelly and all this type of shit. I'm going to expose the rest of them. See, the one thing about the people is that the world don't see the stuff that we see right here. See, before this case came about, there was a life that developed that was outside of real space, and it was called cyberspace. And a lot of MFs can't stop from being on here. And years from now, they done said some things. Some things that they forgot that they'd have said and done. And this jury or court, this court and this government is relying on people still believing all women. This court is relying, so what they lied? So what? So? Now, my thing to ask you is if they lied and it's so, then what does that say about you? for allowing this to happen. Do you understand? So now we have all these people testifying, Sparkle supposed to be testifying, coming to the house, and she herself, oh, (laughs) oh, well, I'm going to save her for another day. Ain't no need of giving all y'all the treats up front. You understand? Ain't no need. But we're going to break this down some more. We're going to break this down some more. Because as we see the injustice with this man, as you see that every motion is being denied. Nobody is always bad. No one can always be bad. That's like saying he was born bad. That's like when he was a newborn baby, he was just bad as a newborn baby. Even Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. Even he was kicked out of heaven. So in other words, he wasn't all bad. So this here is injustice, people. You have a judge calling another judge in another district to make sure that he's on the same accord with her without giving him a bail during that time. And you don't know what came out of that conversation. It's been a lot of prosecutors talking to the witnesses outside of uh, of uh, business hours. You got judges calling uh, 
each other's chambers to make sure they don't do don't you give them a bell because I'm, I'm i'm i ain't giving them no bell i just want to make sure we on the same accord no tell them what else transpired in that conversation why is all these people doing all this underhanded stuff over this man there was a lot of money put behind to make sure this man get convicted There was a lot of money put behind these people to make sure this man get convicted. I would love to know how many donations and charities that it put in these judges' names. I would love to know why these people are so connected with these women's lib. Why? Why would one judge call another judge? Why are you running this man's courtroom? Oh, it's a lot of shit that's going to come out. They paid a lot of money for his ass to be convicted. A lot of money. So that means the money that they paid for this man to be convicted, they expected a whole lot more on his conviction. They are expected to get paid almost a billion dollars for his conviction. And that there is a problem. How are we as black America to allow them to not only incarcerate our men the way that they doing in our face, but still their riches? Do you know that that puts a damper of hope on the culture of black America when they do stuff like this? You don't think it affects you now, but it does affect you. It does affect you. A minority group of people need hope. You destroy that. You rip them up. Because they already got you away from your faith. By telling you that all your priests and pastors are molesters. Do you get where I'm going with this now? They already told you in the early 2000s when they wanted to get these laws passed with the LGBT that all your pastors and all your priests are raping boys. And all of a sudden when they start getting what they wanted, that narrative just so happened to go away. You don't even hear about no priests and no pastors molesting no little boys today. What happened? Why did it all of a sudden go away? The media. The media fooled you then. And now that you know that they fooling you now. Did you hear what I said? They had to turn black America faith against Christ. Because our faith was too strong. Remember, it got us out of slavery because we were, we, we was, we were so uh, faith-based. So they told you, your pastors molested little boys. Your priests molested little boys. So you won't say being gay is an abomination. And these are the people that's behind all these women live to take down all your heterosexual men. And every heterosexual man is called toxic masculinity. They're called misog uh, misogynistic fools. And then they're all rapists. And every women's lib 
got this behind them. There's somebody in this community in that or in each and every last one of their organizations. And the first thing they tell you with all this women's lib, what identify as women, cis and trans women. I beg your pardon? Trans. Now, trans women is identified as a woman. They already got you turned against your church. See, church wasn't about the pastor or the priest. It was about your faith. And you went there to fellowship with your fellow man so the spirits can move. The priest and the pastor fell short of glory as well. But they got you to turn against it, so they got you not to go there to fellowship with your fellow man. Now they're going after your heterosexual man. And the only way that they can be safe if they wear dresses and say that they're gay. And then they turn around and use the gay as a weapon. He's not gay. Well, we're going to find two boys to say that he is. Two boys. Two. two. One testified, oh, me and my friend. He crawled to us and he sucked us off. Really. And you don't hear nobody else saying anything else. You see how they would use that flag as a weapon against heterosexual men when they need it? But then again, if he is gay, he protected. You see how they tell you that a young woman can't date an older man? He's manipulating her. You hear the opposition tell you that all the time. A man in power is manipulating you. It's called manipulation. But a little boy can wear a dress and they call it bravery. That's something for you to think about. That's something for you to hear me on. This is the shit that y'all doing. You understand? And this is the type of things that I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to tell you this. R. Kelly is a God-fearing man. He knows how to pray. And if you have a relationship with a higher being, that's all you need, regardless of what your circumstances is. I told you in 2019, when he was going through this, I said, people screaming, he a monster now. They will start saying, free him once he get convicted. What happened on Twitter the last three, four weeks? Everybody yelling, free R. Kelly. Why is it that we are black America wait till somebody get convicted for us to yell free them? But yet, they selective outrage. They tell you, oh, you, you're a child predator. Hey, who, who children? All the parents get immunity. You can't, you cannot want him to be convicted and all the parents get immunity. Like that, that just doesn't work that way. That just doesn't work that way, but it's been working that way. It's been working that way. And yet people outrage. 
saying free Larry Hoover. All R. Kelly's accusers are alive. Larry Hoover went to jail for being a drug kingpin. Then they tried to put a murder on him years, years later. This is what y'all did. And once you in the system, it's so easy to get in it, but it's damn near impossible to get out. We have to not allow our men to so easily go into these private prisons but being tried by the United States of America. Taxpayers is trying this case. The prisons get a kickoff from the government, from taxpayers' money, but they are housed in private prisons. If the taxpayers are the ones who's housing these prisoners, then it seems to me the government need to be the one housing the prisoners since they're the ones who taking taxpayers' uh, money and paying private prisoners with it. And each month that a prisoner is housed in these facilities, they get money. That's why it's so long for people to be on death row. It is not lucrative if we hurry up and kill somebody on death row. That's why they keep them there for 20 and 30 years before they decide to execute. At that point, it ain't no reason to execute. We don't think about these things. We don't think about these things at all. And that's a problem. One of the things I would like to talk to you about is those people on the opposition that tell you that he fucking kids. He messing with kids. He's sitting up there wanting to sit up there and, and deal with kids. Well, let's talk about the kids, shall we? Let's talk about the kids. Because I'm thinking that there's got to be something that we got to talk about against these kids. So is these the kids that y'all are talking about? Is these the kids? Right? This the kid? This is the one that ain't told the truth since she, since they known her. Ain't told the truth since we known her. Lied about, lied about what was in Jim Derrick got his book. Lied about her age. Lied to the courthouse. Lied to R. Kelly. What I don't get, and what baffles me is, I think that they need to sit up there and call Bubba. Oh, Bubba need to be called. Bubba definitely need to be called. Because here's what I don't get. I don't get why she can sit up here and testify that she had a relationship with Bubba. She sued R. Kelly, gave Bubba some money. I don't understand why that was allowed in Ann Donnelly's courtroom and to be held up. I don't understand that. I don't understand how she can do that. But she did. She did. She sat up there and said I, she sued R. Kelly, and she gave Bubba 4000 of that money.
And I don't understand how no extortion charges is against this child. Fraud. I don't understand this. I don't understand how they are allowing this child to sit up here and they say she a child, so let's call her a child. Let's let's see how young folks think. They say she a kid. Now, on here, she was on the reel. They had her looking like a kid. But let me show y'all how this motherfucker really looked like. Because y- 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 some of y'all will really think that shit. This motherfucker looked just like this. That's what she looked like. Right? That's how she fooled y'all. See how they, they, they fool you? They have them coming out looking like that, and then this is the true picture at the bottom. This is the shit that they do. Right? So then after she sat up there and said these things, after she said R. Kelly choked her, she said she gave him some head. That's what she said. She said, I gave him head. She said, when she, because they got real nasty with the prosecution. She said, I sucked his penis on the bus, then I spit the semen in somebody else's mouth. I didn't want to do it. So every time you came to his house to suck his dick, you ain't never want to do it. You lied to him initially to be with him. Then when you got to suck on him, you said you ain't want to do it and he took your virginity. Then you said he made you change in your bathing suit to walk around the pool. So what was your purpose of going to his house? You said you came to a party. You said you was this and you was that. Did you not come to swim in the swimming pool is why you was wearing your bathing suit? Well, he wanted me to walk around because why would you have your bathing suit with you? Then he he told me to walk around the pool and he bent me over the chair and he took my virginity. Oh, he did. Yeah. Now, the last I checked, being a woman myself, have had sex myself, that if a man bend you over the chair, then you said y'all kept having sex. You kept sucking on them. You kept doing this and you kept doing that. You said that he bent you over the chair. Because I'm going to show what you said to the people. I'm going to show what you said to the people. Because it's needed. Just hold on. I'm going to show what she said. Because she's sitting up there saying, he bent me over the chair. He took my virginity. Oh, really? And what you do? I just left. You didn't want it. No. 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 But you came back. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you used to drive around his house. Mm Mm-hmm. But you didn't want it. Mm Mm-mm. You went to his house in the middle of the night and sat there for hours. Mm Mm-hmm. But you ain't want the sex from him. Mm Mm-mm. Okay, Jeronda. Jeronda, I'm, Jeronda, these, you are very entertaining. So one thing I know that I, I wanted to tell somebody, and women should know, that, A lot of times, 
when you break your virginity, it's painful. If that man would have bent you over the chair and rammed his dick in your vagina, you would have hollered like hell. Cried like hell. You would have did a whole lot of shit. And if he would have did it that way, without being gentle, without being subtle, you would have been damaged from that point on. Especially in pain. So either you wasn't a virgin either either you wasn't a virgin or what get them fire flames up y'all hear me talking this shit y'all hear me y'all know that if he would have stuck his dick in her, bent over a chair, and her body is not ready to receive it, because one thing about breaking your virginity and willing to break your virginity, your body is in a relaxed state. Come on now, because we all are women now. Let's get down and dirty with this shit, because that's what's going to have to take to free this man. They gonna need to get down and fucking dirty. So you mean to tell me that your ass bent over and he just gave it to you just like that. He didn't caress you. He didn't make your body ready for it because that's what's gonna have to happen. That's why it's called missionary for a reason. Because you are, you are relaxed. Your body is relaxed. So even if it's painful, you are relaxed to get what you are about to receive. You got to be accepting of it. Y'all act brand motherfucking new over here. And some of you women over there act brand goddamn new. And every man who has taken a woman virginity will tell you how they caress them first. Whether you want her or not, making her feel relaxed, making her feel wanted, making her feel special. Making her want to give it to you. Being gentle until it pops. Sometimes it takes you two times. Before the stroking can fully begin. Oh, let's get down and nasty with this shit. So you mean to tell me you went home and then you have to be willing because you're going to be traumatized because it's your first time, even if it's him. And then you're going to be scared because you all, we all were scared of the dead. But little Kim said it best. You scared of it first before you throw lips to it. Come on now. Y'all know I'm talking that shit. Y'all know I'm real as they can be. I'm real as it can be. Y'all know it. Unless, you get what I'm saying? You, 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 you understand where I'm coming from. And then you testify how often you was giving him blowjobs. All these things 
that you said he did. And yet, you continue to go back. And yet, when you got of age, you wanted to give him his money back to get back with him, to be back with him. And yet. And yet, you slept with his friend or an acquaintance. And yet, you sued him and gave the acquaintance money. And yet, and this is who y'all believe. This is who y'all believe. Then you sit up here and said that he slapped you in the face, choked you out. You came to and gave him head again. You, he, he choked you out. So again, another traumatic experience. You don't get up and run out the room when you come to. You don't get up and, and, and storm out. He chokes you out. And then you decide he tell you, I want you to give me head and you do it. Then he ejaculates on your shirt. And after he ejaculates on your shirt, you say that's the last time you seen him. And this is the man that traumatized you because he just bent you over and took the pussy and he made you suck his dick and he made you suck it some more and suck and suck and suck and suck and suck. You did more sucking that you said in your testimony than you did having sex with him. Then you kept the stained shirt. And it's so funny. How do I know? Well, because we all know what happened with Bill Clinton. So you kept this stain shirt from a man who you said traumatized you because you didn't want to do it. But you went to the courthouse every mother effing day. But you didn't want to have sex with him? So what did you lie about your age for? Let's get to the bottom of it. If you got to the party and you was at the party, then why would you have to continue to lie about your age? Why would you have, why would you come back? If that's all you want to do is go to the party, meet R. Kelly, get an autograph, and that was it. I had a crush on him. You had a crush on him. Well, we know what little girls have crushes, what we willing to do. And then next thing you know, after he's supposed to choke you out, you saved the shirt many years later. Many years. You saved a semen stained shirt. And for some reason, people think that when the semen is on the shirt, that means sexual assault. No, that just means a sex act took place. That's all that means. It's just telling your business. And you said he gave you herpes. And as much as you sucked, you never mentioned about having herpes in your mouth or anything. Then, you, I find it funny that you met with these attorneys for so long. You met with them for so long.
Yeah, you did. And you rehearsed your answers before you took the stand. And you called Rob. And when you called our, him, you only spoke seconds, which indicate that he wasn't talking to you. You was leaving voice messages. Because it's so funny how the government in the in, uh, Eastern District pulled up the phone number where you calling R. Kelly, but they can't pull up the exact messages. If you was on there for less than a minute, y'all wasn't talking about very much of anything to indicate it was anything inappropriate. It would have to be, hey, Rob, he would have to say, come suck my dick. <laughs> That's what the basic of the conversation would have to go. Because the seconds that y'all was talking, y'all would have had to get right to it then. And I doubt that happened. But yet, you met Bubba on MySpace. And you just so happen to sue R. Kelly and give him some money. Why would you give him money? Why did you give Bubba money? That's what I want to know. I want to know why would you give Bubba some money? think that was missed I really do and I think it's got to be something that we have to do with these parents because there's no way your mother can take you to sue R. Kelly and not take you to the police station once she realized you're suing them because you it you testified that your mother had to go to the lawyer's office with you. So if your mother had to go to the lawyer's office with you, she had to have known you was ha having sex or doing sex acts on R. Kelly. And yet, by you being a minor, she still didn't put out a police report on him. And yet we want to give these parents all this immunity. These boys he's supposed to mess with. Mothers didn't even press charges. I find it to be very funny. Nobody pressed charges. Then people were saying he was holding people against their will. Then you testified, no, I can come and go when I want. I find it to be funny that that happened. I find it to be funny that you traveled two hours to go to his house to only stay 30 minutes. Then you come back the next day, he made me walk around the pool in my swimming pool, my swimsuit. Sound like to me you came over to get in the pool. That's what it sounds like to me. Cause you already had your swimsuit ready. Yet you mentioned nothing about going swimming when you come into the house. You mentioned about parties. So funny. Interesting. It's 
interesting how you knew R. Kelly's address, but you ain't know your uncle's. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting. He made me walk around model like. That's what you said. Then you say he made you wear baggy clothes, but they showed you in his bed with some tight jeans on and heels. Interesting. Then you told him at some point you told him your real age. But you don't be in, you don't recall being arrested for fake ID. Although you was in possession with a fake ID. Find it to be funny. Gotta find some stuff. Cause you gave him your notes. You gave him your money. Uh Bubba your money. And Bubba yet ain't surfaced nowhere. Why is they trying to keep Bubba out the limelight? Why is the government making sure that Bubba don't testify? They really don't want Bubba to testify. And why is it that everybody went to Susan Logan's office to sue Rob? Everybody go to the same attorneys. I find that to be problematic. I find that to be a problem. That's interesting. That's interesting. But I guess I got to still learn how to do this Dropbox so I can get you guys the defense. Um, I'm, get, I'm only doing the defense because Rob's been muted and ain't no need for y'all to get what the prosecution said. Because what the prosecution said been all over the goddamn media for four years before Rob... We even had a damn trial. So I'm I'm trying to work on getting this what she said into evidence. I mean not to evidence, into um a link so you guys can uh, view it and share it. Bubba got all the benefits. We need to know where you at, Bubba. We definitely need to know where you at. We definitely need to know where Bubba is at. So this is... Oh shit. This is uh this is the uh the New e uh Eastern District of New York or what she said and she's supposed to be testifying in the Northern District of Illinois. And here's the damaging testimony. that I read many times, and I'm going to put this, I'm going to work on this tonight, I promise. And I'm going to put this out here. And when I put this out here, I'm going to start on 226. 
when I put this out here, it's your job to pass this shit and make it go viral. Because I want you to know it's a real transcript. This is what I'm showing you. I'm not reading it tonight. And you can share it how you want it. It's old now. You can share it how you want it so people can know the truth. People can know the truth. Oh, Gucci said Bubba is with Barry. Barry Hankerson. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Bubba in the bushes. Well, Bubba, Bubba, if you in the bushes, come on out the bushes. We got to ask you some questions, damn it. We want to know. First of all, I want to know why you only got $4,000. That's the first thing I want to know. Second thing I want to know is how you meet her and so happen to take her to R. Kelly and then she end up suing and you get some money. That's what I want to know. Hey, Gucci. Bubba, why you hiding? Why is he being protected? I want to know why he being protected. She said, now y'all remember, she said, well, she said that, uh, Geronda go, she said, I lied about that. She said that Bubba and R. Kelly had some things going on. And that Bubba started sucking on R. Kelly. Y'all remember that? She said that with Tasha K. And she said they trusted her. That's what she said. Then she said, I lied. This child, this is the lionish child ever. Why does this child get away with lying like this? And they keep putting on the stand. I don't get it. I don't understand why this child lied like this. And they keep putting their ass on the damn stand. Whoever had that Instagram recording, inbox me. That Instagram recording with her and John Jalen Savage. If you record that conversation with her and John Jalen Savage, Back in 2019 or, or whatever, please, please give it to a spitting fire. If you have that. Bubba was sweet on everybody. She said, Bubba... Bubba, t she said, I walked in the room and, and they, they looked at each other and then Bubba just gave him some head. I said, everybody just all, everybody gave R. Kelly head. I said, this, y'all been sucking on R. Kelly thing so much. I'm surprised that thing, uh, that thing is raw. And remember what she said. She said she went to the house and he, she wanted to do it. And he said, not today. He turned that ass down. She sucked on that thing so much, he turned her ass down. He's like, not today. Daddy don't feel good. And then they said, oh, he called. He called her. Um, He make them call him daddy. 
right? Let me see. Um, what was her name? Let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, come on. Hold on, y'all. Let's see. Hold on. I'm almost. Hold on. I'm eating the peppermint, y'all. Hold on. Mm. Mm. Let me see. Hold on. Let me put y'all on mute for a second. Simone, when you took Michael out for frozen oh yogurt, boy. he told you he likes vanilla. Michael was. No, I know Michael. Quad. He's a jokester. You know, Michael is a fun. <laughs> He's blinking a lot. <laughs> um, no, um, my ideal woman is Michelle Obama. But if it's different, I'd accept it as long as w they love each other. Would you take other. Melania Trump? No, she'll give her right back. <laughs> she'll run her off quick. <laughs> Okay. Simone, yeah. Kelly from Hanover, New Hampshire, said to your son about getting a body. Michael is my b And that, you know, and, and I'm not an advocate for premarital sex, but I know they, you know, they probably They're gonna boring. do it. What is so you? I told them how the women are. I mean, are that's just real. And so I tell them, be very careful. Don't get anybody pregnant, because these women will lie. So I know what I did. So, did oh, I say that? What did you do? You been with daddy? <laughs> Don't add it up. I'm adding it up. I've been with him 20 years. Oh, and how old is Buddy <laughs> Jr.? Okay, so I wanted to uh, show you guys something, okay? I had to find it first, and I didn't want to, um, okay. So if you have watched, uh, oh, shit. Hold on. This thing is messed up. Hold on, this messing up, y'all. Because I ain't playing this. So that's why I got to put it on the screen while y'all can see it. This here. Okay. If you watch Married to Medicine, then you know Dr. Heavenly, okay, Kimes is a dentist. She is quite shady, and she likes to call her husband Dr. Damon Daddy. She calls her husband Daddy. And if you watch Married to Madison, she'd be like, Daddy. She calls him Daddy all throughout. She always calls him Daddy. Okay? I got a girlfriend who's not a celebrity, her and her husband, and she calls her husband Daddy. Right? So she calls her husband Daddy. It's not unusual for a wife to call her husband Daddy. I've seen women do that. I don't do that. But I've seen women do that.
Okay. Right. So. I tell you the truth. My fire flames. Boy, they know they. I tell you what. They sure be putting the fire back on me. They be putting the fire back on me, y'all. Good God. They be hard on me. I be trying to make a point. Then I don't give a damn. <sighs> there you have it. Fire flames, you're happy. You're happy. Who these fire flames don't be playing? Tell you the truth. Man, fire, don't do this. Don't do that. Just be scolding me. Look at them. There you go. Look at them. Look at them. They, they so spoiled. Look at them. Look at them, y'all. Look at them. Four rotten. Yeah, I know you can't see my light counter. YouTube just been just just been doing whatever they want to do to me. He did YouTube YouTube YouTube. Just do me wrong, Shannon. They do me wrong. They do my ass wrong. And I don't know why the opposition fucking with my page when I first come on be flagging my shit. Got my shit buffering and shit. I don't be over there. We don't be over there fucking with them. They don't want us to start fucking back with them, do they? <clears throat> so I advise them to stop fucking with us. Because we can turn up and turn this bitch out, can't we, Fire Flames? They better stop having my shit buffering. Flagging my shit. Because you don't like what I'm talking about. You ain't running this over there. Run that over there. That's why I was telling y'all to get them lights up. Shit. That shit crazy. The hell wrong with them. Everybody has a right to think how they want to think. If they think R. Kelly guilty, they think he guilty. I just don't believe that if he walk, I don't believe none of the motherfuckers will be mad. That's just my take. I believe if he came in a vicinity, they'll want to autograph and every goddamn thing else and probably lie and say they advocated for him. I ain't lying. I don't believe it. I don't fucking believe it. Shit, because they mad because I break shit down over here. They mad because I speak my piece over here and how I feel. I'm not going to believe no all goddamn women. All of them can't be lying. Yes, the fuck they can when it's a check to be had. We ain't talking about no goddamn income tax check. We talking about some real goddamn money. Hell yeah, motherfuckers can be lying. We gonna get together and we go lying. We gonna get this damn dough. What the fuck? What you mean they can't be all lying? So all the uh, Bill Cosby's accused ain't lying, but they sure went to Gloria Allred and got her half a million. Unfortunately, she gonna walk off with only a, a 175 probably. Hell yeah, they lying. They want that damn money. Shit. 
shit. They want that shit. Dom K, what's going on? I ain't, I ain't miss you this time. I ain't miss you this time. Anybody heard from Randa besides her post and saying that? I know the baby was born a couple uh uh about three weeks ago. Anybody heard from the uh Randa? Yeah, she doing great. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. She's doing great. That's good. That is good. Oh, I would I would love to go see her. Well, you know, our Kelly Hogg tied them. He he for he he First of all, surviving R. Kelly was such a lie. They said that they were hostages. There were no hostages. Then they had this fake ass damn rescue with Michelle Kramer. Y'all. <laughs> Oh my God. No, you're not distracting me. I don't get to talk to you, Dom K. I don't get to talk to you. Who the hell rescued your daughter with a camera crew? Not with the police, with a camera crew. At a hotel. How you hostage at a hotel? I thought you was in the basement. Tied to the room with buckets. That's what they showed on Surviving R. Kelly. Then you get on the stand and tell people, oh, I can come and go when I wanted to. So who was in, in buckets had it, it, man. Well, if I was her, if I was her, since they can bring in surviving R. Kelly and, 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 and they can see it, I would ask questions about surviving R. Kelly. Ask questions about it. Because one thing about a lie is always, it's full of lies. Yeah, you got rescued at the hotel with a camera crew. You at a hotel, a nice hotel, with a camera crew. Then she leaves. Go go get with an older man and have a baby. A broke older man. <laughs> this is the shit they did. And these young girls, they done confused them. You know, young people don't know right from wrong too much anyway because they pass them. They want their way. It's always somebody else's fault. You know they can't think for themselves. So they sat up there and said some shit. They know it's a lie, but they said it so much they confused them. The Clary's definitely wanted that money and fame. Some groupies. Some groupies. Some groupies. So, the judge is denying motions like crazy. He's doing an Ann Donnelly. 
right? We are gonna have to figure out how to get Gucci. Remember, I told you about those billboards on wheels. Do you remember us having that conversation about a couple years ago? That ended up coming up about two weeks ago. And a guy, yeah, yeah, and a guy said, it sounds like to me, y'all need some billboards on wheels. And the first person I thought of, I said, I said that to Gucci. And remember I was saying, Gucci, that's what was needed. You know it's God's will when you do something and you say something and it go away and then the idea come back up again. That's because that's, that's meant to be. Well, well, Gucci, I I looked into them because I was going to get some billboards, and I collected over $2,700. I ended up giving it back to the people. However, because it wasn't enough. We needed some billboards. We had enough for one direction. We didn't have enough for two. So I was like, well, ain't no need of doing this. So I gave the money back, right, to the people. But the guy was like, okay, when I was explaining to him what was needed, he said, it sounds like to me y'all need some some billboards on wheels. Now, some of the people are like, I don't think so, but I'm thinking so. But the only thing is, it's costly. The only good part about it is, it's a lot of us. But how much? Like, when? You get what I'm saying? We need people on the grounds walking outside the courthouse. Okay? You can't come up in the courtroom, but you got to be in them alleys and them and them damn, and them walkways, y'all got to be, we got to get out there, not marching, not rallying, but you got to, hey, this is what they did, hold on, I'm waiting on it to, why is this taking so slow? Why is it taking so slow? It's so slow. Oh. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. Didn't I tell y'all motherfucker she was either what she was? Didn't I tell y'all? Wait a minute. Okay. Now I'm gonna show y'all something. Stay right there. Remember. When I told y'all, hold on. Hold on, let me show y'all this. I told y'all this about six months ago. All right, let me get, let me, oh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do this yet. Let me show y'all this. 
Hold on. I got to get my fire. Hold on. I don't want to do that yet. Hold on. Okay. Got to get my fire too damn black on the screen. Right. So, remember when I told y'all a few months ago that, um, and they took it off Google. Remember, I was looking for it. And I told y'all about protesters. And I told y'all that they are hired protesters. And I told y'all some of them protesters be college students. Some of them are hired actors and actresses. And y'all thought that shit was real. Remember this heifer here? Remember this heifer? This is the Bill Cosby uh, trial. Remember this heifer? And remember, they took her off Google. Remember when I was telling y'all I was looking for this picture? It surfaced back up. Y'all remember me telling y'all this? Y'all remember this heifer? Who remember her? Right? Okay. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Didn't I tell y'all that Heifer was an actress? Didn't I tell y'all that bitch was an actress? <laughs> She played in Bill Cosby uh joint and she was hired by Hollywood to do that. Did not tell y'all peppers. Did not tell Spitting Fire said that shit. Did not tell y'all she was a paid fucking actress. Did not tell y'all don't believe them goddamn protesters out there. Did not tell y'all. Didn't I tell y'all? I told y'all. Remember when I was talking about protesters? And I said they are paid. And I said a lot of them are students and a lot of them are actresses. Didn't I tell y'all that? I said, remember that woman that had uh, fake blood and she was all out there naked? Remember I told y'all? <laughs> and, and they took this off the internet for a while, but they put it back up there. I meant to tell y'all, I found that a couple of weeks ago. But remember, I told y'all. I told y'all. Spit fire me on her shit. I'm trying to tell you. She was a paid actress. You see how they setting your men up? You see how they setting your men? Did not, yep, you did. Did not tell y'all that shit. Did, take a look. This is the, the dragon song, god damn it. The dragon song got to be played on this shit. This got to be the dragon song. Fuck this. Didn't I tell y'all that heifer was a goddamn uh, a paid actress? Don't tell me I'll be breaking shit down. You see how they fooled y'all asses? This is the shit y'all should be mad about. Like, you lying. Y'all lying, bitches. I told you them women's live is some liars, man. That's her. Paid actress. An actress. No, Shannon. Look at them titties. Go ahead and get something to eat. <laughs> Go ahead and feed yourself. Didn't I tell y'all? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. Spin fire broke that shit down. I, I told y'all several times. And I was telling y'all I was looking for that picture. I said she was all in the street, half naked and shit. I said, you know that bitch. I said, that's why I told you. Remember I told you a few months ago, I said, I'd have been like, bitch, if you don't get your ass up. <laughs> Remember I told you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was right. I was right about, even Jason had to put some fire flames up. Look, Jason normally just say free R. Kelly. Even Jason was like, yeah, I remember that shit myself. Told you. That's her ass. You know I was going to find it. I was going to find her ass, god damn it. I found her. Ain't that some shit? G girl, Kimberly, even Jason had to say, put the fire flames up. Jason was like, yeah, I remember that shit too. I remember you said that. I told y'all I was going to find it. And, and Google had took it off. Google took that shit off. I told you the motherfuckers was paid. And then she right in front of the camera, with, right in front of Bill Cosby and his uh, publicist. You see that shit in the background? I told you. Told you. Told you. Man, these motherfuckers lying like hell. Lying like hell. Lying. What them women, what them goddamn women's uh, live got to say about that? Hiring them. I told you all those goddamn people wasn't no damn, uh, wasn't uh, no women out. I told you they, they paid them damn people. They go around get them colleges, students. Them college students be rock walking behind their asses. Them motherfuckers be uh out there for a goddamn grade holding that sign. Them goddamn young girls can care to give a damn less about Bill Cosby. Shit, they wasn't born. Yeah, I told you. She was paid. The feminist movement always pay. They always pay. Text me the number, Gucci. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me turn it on. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -mm. I told y'all that that shit was uh fake. Told y'all that shit was fake. Yeah, text me, Gucci. Yeah. I told y'all that shit. That shit fake as fuck. I just wanted you to know that. So when y'all said, and I told y'all a lot of these goddamn victim supporters on these internets are paid. I keep telling y'all that. I don't know why y'all keep on not listening to me. You don't see nobody challenging that. I told y'all all of them are paid. All these people are put in place. They down with the women's lib.
told you that. Mm-hmm. That's why I asked. I just thought that I'd put that up there for y'all. I thought that y'all was like, God damn, you sure did say that. Uh-huh, sure enough. Oh, Lennon Weber. Look at him. Who he remind y'all of? You know what, Jason? Jason, you are pretending. You got to be pretending. The shit you say, you got to be pretending. I tell you, Jason, you got to be pretending. I know you pretending. <laughs> the dad of different stroke. There you go, B Rain. There you go. There you go. I ain't going to say nothing. That's exactly what I was thinking. That's B, B, Rain. That's exactly my first thought. He looked like one of them old, yeah, one of the members. On the porch. Yup. Yup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Parnell said cluck. He just had that look. He just had that look. Put a brown sugar cube on his desk. Shit, that nigga be crazy. Yeah. We were saying that. Ain't it a look they have? That's what B was saying. Lenny, up. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. B said that shit quick. What's Shannon? Shannon, back to the corner. Back to the corner, Shannon. I'm sorry, y'all. He's one of the ones we keep in the corner. And this time, face the wall. <laughs> that is stupid. Why you ask Jason, do we like that picture? What picture? Wait a minute. Let me see if I can find it again. That picture. Jason, you like that picture? Let me put this picture down. You like that picture, Jason? J Jason. You like that? Jason said he like his nipples. He like his nipples cooked. You like your nipples cooked, Jason? That's the girl that was on Bill Cosby show. Yeah. Yeah. And they paid her. Yeah. 
You see how I be finding out shit? I told y'all I was going to get to the bottom of it. Look at Jason. Wow. Yeah, Jason. Go on and get you a look. Jason, go on and snapshot that. You know what? Judah, Shannon to the corner. Shannon, take Judah to the corner with you. Judith is going to the corner with you. Shannon got a company to the corner, y'all. The judge is Hitler's cousin. Go to the corner, Shannon. You and you and you and Judah. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. Champelle, I don't know what we're gonna do with them. Shannon. Shannon been rubbing off on Judith. That's what's been happening. They've been ba co bailiffs together for too long. Y'all in the corner, I tell you the truth. And that's her. <laughs> Kimberly put you in time out permanently. I'm trying to tell you. No. Ain't they cutting up tonight? They are cutting up. Ooh, when she ain't got no makeup on. When she ain't got no tan. That child is ooh wee. Ooh wee. She got some white African roots. Ooh, we that chat when makeup does her wonders. That is a lie when they say everybody light skin is cute. That is a damn lie. There is some ugly light skinned people. Ooh, yes it is. Funky white chocolate. Them, oh, that's some African roots on that head. I told y'all she was paid. People think people out there really protesting. Thinking them people out there really raising hell. Ain't nobody raising hell today. People don't give a shit less. I see protesting here. It'll be number six or eight people. People so wrapped up in their own goddamn lives. That's why the R. Kelly uh, can't get together. People are too wrapped up in their own lives now. Life becomes so complicated to each individual person, they can't even help nobody else. I, um... I contacted the court reporter today to see about getting the transcripts after she had sent me that um that um list on how much it cost. And I'm gonna tell y'all, she said she had emailed me back. She asked me was I interested, and I asked her could I get it when the trial goes on, because those transcripts are so expensive. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I would have to collect the money up front. I couldn't be stuck with that kind of bill. That's just too much. That bill is just too expensive. I know people who said they spent thousands of dollars on transcripts. I cannot do that.
nor do I know if I want to do that. I would rather go in on it and then just disseminate them out. And I don't mind. I know some people want the transcripts, and I told them two weeks ago I'm working on a Dropbox, but I'm going to start working on it. I know when wanted one. I'm going to start working on it. And you get the bushes. What bushes? Me too. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to get it in a Dropbox and put it on my community. I'm still learning how to do that, so that way I can put the link on the community and anybody can just get it. Instead of me having to email everybody who uh uh-uh, uh I want y'all uh uh-uh, uh cause ooh hell no. Nah. But how many people from Chicago in my chat? How many people are from Chicago right now in the chat? If you're from Chicago, put put your put 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 it in the chat. Or from the state of Illinois, right outside Chicago, either or, put it in the chat. Yeah, you in Alabama. Mm Mm-hmm. Only Chicago, only Illinoisans. Chicago or right outside Chicago. Only Tennell. No, only if you from Chicago. Just put it in the chat. Not nowhere else, just Chicago. To nail and who else? Hey. To nail and who else? That's it. Trying to leave Jason alone. He, he pure don't corrupt him. Jason, I know that. See, that's why. That's why Kimberly Shannon corrupting Jason. Jamie, we only got two people from Chicago. Sunil and Jamie. Jason, follow the rules. Only two people from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Only one, only one person said they live in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. You from Chicago? You from Chicago? All right, Chicago coming on in here. All right, we got three, we have four people from Chicago. Wynette, oh, hey, I was just talking about you, Wynette. I know that you wanted to get the uh, transcripts. I'm still working on that. I was just telling them about that. Uh, I said, I told, I think I told somebody I was getting the transcript two weeks ago. Well, now that we ain't doing the billboards, I can work on that now. Uh. Mm-hmm. 
You from Texas, Jason. You from Texas, and Shannon trying to get you to be breastfed all the way from Texas with his bad butt. Chicago, when that you from Chicago? Got five, six people from Chicago. You forgot the I and the L in guilty, Jason. You got to put an I after the U and the L. An I L after the U in guilty. Mm, mm, mm. Don't be laughing at him, y'all. Don't be laughing at Jason. <laughs> His fingers still numb. Hello, Linda Perry. Uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. You about eight hours from Chicago. Nebraska only eight hours from Chicago. I don't know why when I think of Nebraska, let me tell y'all, when I think of Delaware, I think of Nebraska, Iowa. Is there any black people in Nebraska? Are you black or white? Because there ain't no black people in Nebraska, is it? I know they say it's only like 300 people black in Idaho. I don't know how true that is. I don't know how true that is. Born and raised in Nebraska. My uncle, my uncle uh, live in Nebraska. I know it was another guy that I uh that was a that was a sub. He used to come on the channel all the time. He was from Nebraska, and I said, "You the only one I know." Iowa, two hours from Chicago. Iowa, two hours from Chicago. If y'all two hours from Chicago, we ain't that far from Idaho. Iowa? I thought Iowa was so far away. In certain states, I don't know. I don't I don't have <clears throat> I know people used to be in Seattle, Washington, California. I know people that was in um Texas. <clears throat> I know people that was in um uh Arkansas, uh, Arizona, and uh, of course, Illinois, and Detroit, New York, and Pennsylvania, and uh, Virginia, okay, and Maryland, and uh, okay, Florida, and Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> Texas, and Carolina, North and South. 
I don't know people in Dakota, North or South, uh, New York. I know people in New York. I don't know people in Iowa and, and, and just down knowing people in Nebraska. And uh, let me see. <clears throat> like, I don't know people in, let me see. I don't know people in Montana, North or South Dakota. Uh, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Idaho, Nevada. No, I know people in Nevada. Uh, Idaho, Montana. Let me see. Maine. Do I know people in Missouri? Oklahoma. The states I know, Oregon. I don't know anybody in Oregon. But I know some people in Washington, Seattle, Washington, California, Nevada, Arizona. I don't think I know nobody in New Mexico or Alaska. But I know people in Florida and Georgia and North and South Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, Kansas, Texas. Yeah, I know people in those states. I don't know people in um, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Oklahoma, North and South Dakota, Iowa. I don't know people in them states in, in Maine. I don't know them people in them states. I don't know nobody in Rhode Island or Connecticut. Do I know somebody in Connecticut? I don't think I know nobody in Connecticut. I know people in New Jersey. I just met somebody in Delaware. You know what I'm saying? I don't know nobody in Hawaii. Well, we go to Hawaii for vacation. Vermont. Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Those are the states I don't know nobody in. I didn't know until I met Phases. I I didn't know nobody in Oklahoma. I was like, black people in Oklahoma. It's just certain states. It's just this certain states. Not that I'm trying to be oblivious, but it's just certain states that black people. I just thought that they reside like. I know people go to California, Nevada, and Arizona, Texas, okay? And I know they will go to Kansas and Missouri, and you know what I'm saying, and, and Arkansas and, and Louisiana and Mississippi and all the southern states and Kentucky and all that over there, Pennsylvania, even a little out west. But all the, the I don't know what you call this, the west is is, is – What's it called? Northwest states, I guess. Like Montana and Idaho and Wyoming. I don't, Colorado. I don't know nobody in no goddamn Colorado. I don't know nobody in Oklahoma. The only person I knew in Oklahoma was Phases, and then somebody else said they was in Oklahoma. I ain't even know black people live in Oklahoma. Don't have me out there no goddamn sticks trying to come see y'all asses. You go to the Nike outlet where? What are y'all talking about? Memphis folks checking in. Alabama, New York. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know nobody in them, uh, them other states. 
I ain't even know. You know what I'm saying? I be like, damn, black people live there? Because when you see... You in Massachusetts? Okay. Now I know somebody in Massachusetts. I knew black people live in Massachusetts. I did. I did. I kind of figured that. I don't know if they live in Montana or Idaho or Iowa. I mean, I don't even think black people even look right, sound right saying Iowa. Well, you live in Iowa. I mean, that don't even sound right. Like, you live in Iowa. And the first thing I ask, how many black people live in Iowa? Because it just looks like you the only one that live there. You just sound like you the only one that live there. You live in Iowa, B. Uh, B. Rain. You said there's plenty of us in Iowa. Is it? You see, that's why I got to travel more. You know what I'm saying? I be one of them damn people, go up to people and touching them like, oh, you is black. <laughs> <laughs> they be like, why is this bitch touching me? Oh, we in Iowa. I know black people live in Iowa. Oh, you black? Okay. <laughs> You is black. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm real though. I didn't know black people lived in uh, some of them states though. I don't know nobody. Everybody I know is from the south. Either you from the west, the south, or the east. Or midwest. I don't know nobody from the other states. That's a damn shame. I should go visit. I should go take a trip and go over there. We got to get out of our comfort zone, people. I'm, I'm going to go to Iowa. What is there to do in Iowa? Look, B-Rain, don't have me in Iowa. Don't have me up in the sticks. And, and they, you know what I'm saying? I ain't wor- Well, I ain't worried about the KKK hanging my fat ass from a tree. I've been and broke the branch. But, shit, I, I wish they would. But that don't mean they can't hang me for no damn crane. My fat ass be hanging in the air from a crane. Y'all better come and, and rescue me. Don't have, don't get don't let them white folks get to me now. Shit. You hear me, B Rain? Don't let them get to me. <laughs> you know what? It ain't none in Iowa but land. Thank, no, thank you. NYC always something to do. I'm just saying. I don't want them to have my ass over no guy in the landfill some damn way in the crane. My fat ass ha- dangling from the damn sky. Shit. Uh-uh. They'll be like, no, nah, we got to put our ass on the crane. We ain't put on this branch. Let's go fall. <laughs> No, no, we ain't holding this up. Shit. They, had, or they just probably just go ahead and, and just throw my ass over the mountains or something. Uh-uh. Nope. I ain't playing with y'all. I ain't going to some of them states. Some of them states I ain't, some of them states I ain't going to. Uh-uh. So I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm good. You know, like my uncle, he lived in the south and he lived out in, he lived out in the sticks. He was like, shoot, we got to shake them trees, them snakes being there. See, I see, I see, see, I can't come visit you because I can't come visit people with, all living like that, with, living with wildlife. I, I'm too urban for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm too urban for that. I, I ain't got time to be living with wildlife. I ain't got time, you know what I'm saying? Like my girlfriend, she was in California in the desert, and, and her son uh, they on a military base and she was like, Oh shoot, come on. We got to get back, get back y'all. And and I'm on the phone with her. She's saying this. I'm like, what, why are you telling the kids to get back? Oh, it's a snake by the car. See, that's enough for me to get my ass in the car and be at the airport and be on the plane. If you want to get rid of spitting fire ass, let it be a snake somewhere around. I'm telling y'all. It ain't going to be no talking. I will be packed up, 
By the time you talk to me, I'll be landing right back in Detroit. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. I I ain't got time. I ain't got time to be in, in living in, with wildlife and shit. You know, like my uh, you know, my late mother in law. Me and my husband, we went to um visit them in the south when she was alive. And they lived out in the woods, like in a in in a lot of land and a lot of trees. Girl, it, it not only was it deers and bears and coyotes, you see, and snakes. I said, Oh hell no. I stayed in the house the whole time. I was so miserable, y'all. I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. This just ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? Give me the sirens and the police sirens and shit at night and some shooting. Fuck it. I can't fuck it. I, this ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just too hood, hood, ghetto, whatever you call it. This ain't for me here. But I was just watching. Who watched Yoki? People on the, on the run from Chicago come to Iowa. Well, shit, I don't know why. It looked like they had stand out. Like, nigga, we can tell you on the run from Chicago. We can tell you a Chicago nigga. You don't even fit in here. I, I don't know why. I I just can't do that. Like, Yoki, who watch Yoki? Y'all watch Yoki? Yoki, I watch her on YouTube. And she be catching the wild game. Like, I was watching her the, this morning. This girl caught two iguanas. Killed them and skinned them and cooked them. Oh, hell no. Iguanas? Iguanas? Oh, hell no. See, folk, too many folk eat wild game for me. I, I don't like all that. That's why, you know what? I am fat because I drink a lot of soda that I don't have no business doing. And, and, uh, and you know, and eating snacks that I don't have no business doing. It ain't from food. Because I don't eat all that bullshit like people think. That's a misconception when people say fat people can't stop eating. That is a misconception. It's the shit that you eat. Because I'm not eating no wild game. I'm not eating no fucking iguana. That's why when you go to people's house, you got to ask what they cooking. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was, she, she, she killed the iguana. They in her sink dead, just dead. And she picking them up, head just slinging back and forth. And then she skinned it. I was like, oh, my God. Then she was, she soaked it, and she seasoned it, and cooked it up. And, and, I was, and she was like, oh, this is so good. It was called jerk iguana. You know how you get jerk chicken, jerk pork? Jerk iguana. I said, oh, my, oh, my God. She was eating the shit out of that. Y'all don't be watching Yoki. I watch Yoki because I like to shoot. And, uh, I watch Yoki because I like to shoot. And she, she's a, she's into, um, hunting and she's into shooting and she's into, uh, hunting and shooting. So that's why she eat wild game. And uh, she she be sh- she be shooting the fuck out them guns, and I like shooting. And then plus I want to see what's the 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 um uh, the newest gun out, right? Skin a squirrel like a catfish. Who is skin a squirrel? Shannon, you know where you going? Back in the corner. Back in the corner, Shannon. Oh, you do be watching uh Yoki Parnell. You be watching Yoki? <laughs> he said, fine motherfucker. <laughs> you like them booty shorts she be wearing, don't you? <laughs> you like them booty shorts she be wearing, Parnell? And them titties be out. One thing about Yoki, she be hunting. She be hunting sexy like a motherfucker. She be. <laughs> I'm like, 
like, go on, Yoki. Go on, Yoki. She, she do. I was like, she give a man a run. You, oh, original man, you watch Yoki too? <laughs> you said we love Yoki. <laughs> man, look. Look. The sexy hunter I ever saw. Oh, these men. No wonder she got a lot of men in her damn chat. D shit. No wonder. Y'all made her ass rich as hell. Look at all the men coming out. Look at all the men coming out, y'all. <laughs> See, I like to I like to shoot. So when she be talking about that, I be like, hell yeah. I be t I'm showing y'all the channels I be on when I ain't in the set kill sector. I be on other channels. Anyway, she be show. I said, "Ooh, look at her with that that booty shaking all over the place." I guess she paid a lot of money for that booty. She gonna show it. Shit, I would too. Ain't no shame in my game. Shit. You said just nasty. <laughs> 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 Hell yeah. But look. <laughs> oh, hell no. She not scared to play with pist pistols. Pistols? Shit. Did you see them sawed off? She be um playing with them damn uh, assault rifles? Shit. That girl don't play. She don't goddamn play. Let's see. She don't play. Let's see. Um. Hold on. Gang, welcome back to the channel. I had a few people ask. It gives it that that back seat. It comes, but I don't want the extent. And she drive them the manly cars too. She drive the manly cars. I'm trying to find. Here y'all go, fellas. Here y'all go. Here y'all go. What's up, yo, gang? Well, <laughs> There y'all go. Y'all, you love them shorts. You too, yo, gang. Uh, let me see. Hold on. I ain't never heard of the fried oxtails. I ain't never heard of that. I mean, I'm quite sure people do it.
Ulsøg. Her ass don't be giving a fuck. She be hunting like a motherfucker. She be hunting. Look at her, y'all. She be hunting them goddamn alligators and shit. Look at that shit. And you know she wear all that spandex shit. You know the, you know why the men be over there. It don't be nothing but men in her damn chat. None but men. What you mean some good eating? See, that's because you from Alabama, Shannon. Y'all down there in Alabama eat all that wild game. My granddaddy from Alabama. My granddaddy from Alabama, he ate all that wild game. I, I'm with you, Gucci. I'm with you. I'm with you. I ain't, I, I like to watch it. I ain't gonna eat the shit though. Did y'all see when she caught? They caught that black um pig, that black wild pig. And then she she they they put a she put a bullet in that damn pig head. Look, y'all. She had that damn rifle. She sniped that goddamn pig out. Went up to it, put another one in his head, grabbed that sucker by the feet and dragged it to the goddamn truck. I said, oh, oh no, Yoki. I was like, no, Yoki. No. I was like, ooh, that was just just made me cringe. I was like, she, I mean, she give a man a run for his money. I said, she, her husband got to be a hell of a man to, to, to be with her. Not that she a bad woman, but she get down with the boys. For real, for real. I thought I did. But she really down with the boys. You better put them in, you got to put... You better put one in the head. Them motherfuckers strong. That's what she did, uh, Shannon. She put it down. Then when she went up close to it, she just took them on out right in the head. I said, shit, Yoki. I mean, it wasn't nothing to her. So you can imagine, because, you know, they say if you can shoot anything, you you know, you'll kill. She was like, Shh. somebody coming to her house, she giving it to him, and she is. And she is, and the thing is, she know how to she know how to put them rifles together quick. That girl ain't no damn joke. Shit, I was like, I know she ain't got no problems out her goddamn husband. Or no damn body. I hope they know, I hope nobody know not to fuck with her. Cause she'll put them down real quick, fast, in a hurry. I was like, she, and then she was like, we going to take this wild hog back. And we, and she hung that damn thing upside down and she got the skin in it. I was like, oh my God. And the stuff they used to take the skin off y'all. I was like, oh, I was like, see, I don't want to see that. Like, I just want my shit already skint and already dead. I don't want to see. The, the the last minutes of it, the killing of it, the dead and the skinning. I, I don't want to see that. I want to see already skinned and chopped up, and I can't even imagine what you was looking like. You ain't know about Yoki, Kimberly? Yo, Yoki, that sh Yoki the shit. I'm a fan of her channel. I be liking when she do them gun reviews and she be shooting them. She'll tell you which one to hurt your shoulder and which one won't. I like that. Uh, never heard of her? Y'all, I'm telling y'all, she the shit, though. Just like, let me show let me show y'all what she was cooking this iguana. Let me show y'all. This iguana. That's it. 
Hold on. Okay. So I can't show y'all the, the video, but I can just go scam through it. Look at that dead iguanas. Look. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, that's why they like it. They like that big old butt. So she picked her herbs. Now, look, look at it. Wait a minute. So she making something. And then. Now, now. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, the, uh, iguana in the sink over there on the other side soaking that she just killed and skinned. See, that's her washing it. Uh-uh. See, fuck that. I can't do with that. And then... This them eating it. I can't, I can't. She tasting it. Amazing. And again, not because I cooked it, but Mama Trini, we're gonna keep her anonymous. Definitely an excellent chef. Catch and clean cooked iguana. Let's take this. See, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's enough. That's all I can show y'all. I cannot do that. I can't. I can't do that. I might as well take this picture off. Jason, I got this picture up here just for you, but you ain't even watching, looking at it. You, <laughs> when that said no way, girl, look, the shit she be eating, I'm like, uh-uh, like, uh-uh, like, not the shit look good, but I know what it is because I saw you catch it and kill it, and I saw you skin it, and so I'm not, I'm not fucking with it. They catch and eat iguanas and gator all day, every day in Florida. Oh, no. Oh, no. See, I got, so you mean tell me somebody, I go in somebody's house, I got to be like, what you, what's this? Oh, this chicken, uh-uh, mm-mm. Like, I got to, mm-mm, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am, I'm good. That's what I'm saying, I'm too urban for that. Like, that country life, I'm too urban for that. Frog legs with, uh-uh, mm-mm. Nope. I used to watch Duck Dynasty. Who remember Duck Dynasty used to come on? Who remember Duck Dynasty? Rattlesnake? Uh-uh. No. I seen them skin a rattlesnake and eat it. I can't. You used to watch Duck Dynasty, Rocket? Look, they used to have, they used to cook frogs. And they would cook that shit like they cooking chicken. And them things shaped just like a frog. I'm like, oh, hell no. And it's like, it tastes like chicken. Well, you know everything tastes like chicken to black people. <laughs> like, the, the, we got the current things are not to be eaten. I'm with you. Frog tastes like green chicken. Uh-uh. I'm good. I'm good. I like frog legs. Judith, you like frog legs? I'm good. Raccoon, I'm good. I'm good, y'all. Y'all, I'm good. I'm with Gucci. Chicken, seafood, and maybe beef or something like that. That's it. That's why I drop a, I I eat a cow, a pig. I'm trying to stop eating that and a chicken okay that's it 
and 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 something in the sea like fish. I ain't eating everything in the sea because I ain't eating no goddamn octopus either. Shit, I ain't eating that shit. So like. So, like this right here. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. Okay. 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 Okay, so this here is what they do. Like, I'm not eating a live octopus. Now, that's a live octopus, as you can see, it's moving, right? Y'all see the eyes on that damn thing right there? I am not eating a live octopus. Now, watch that thing get stuck all on her face. Look at that. She finna eat it live. Ugh. Look at them. They lie. You see the heart beating in there? And she put it on some seasoning and cooking it and eating it. Now, this is a live octopus. See how she just take the head off? See, look. She bit the head off. And see, that's the live octopus. You see how it's still alive? See, I can't be fucking with all that. <laughs> y'all was like hell no nah. I come back and I see the chat y'all like hell no nah. <laughs> but, but, but you be like spit fire what the hell your ass be watching <laughs> would I be watching on these YouTube streets You said she she need all she need all the shots. <laughs> no, I can't. Hell no, getting sick. That's nasty. The brain. Oh my god, that's crazy. I gotta eat everything. I ain't gotta eat everything. Cook. I ain't eat no shit that look that nasty, even if it's dead. I'm not eating that shit. Oh my god. You see that? You see that? Like, that's just how they do. You see what I'm saying? Like... They just eat everything in the fucking sea. Like. You see what I'm saying? See, like, see. Wait a minute, let me show y'all this. I know y'all. See, look at, wait a minute. Look at that. Somebody skint that snake and the snake's still moving on the counter. You see that? They, it's a headless snake. And it's still moving. See? 
See that? On a counter. They skint it and everything. You see what I'm saying? I can't be fucking around. I can't be fucking around. I can't be. I can't be. I ran them off. I ran them off. Oh, my God. That's happened when turkeys, when sh you shoot the head off. Yeah. That's the, can't, that's just nasty. I can't mess with no wildlife, y'all. I just, I just can't do it. I won't do it. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not, I'm not messing with no wildlife. I ain't why I I'm not cooking Japanese food because I mean I I don't even want them to cook my Japanese food because I don't know what is dead and you tell me stuff is chicken and it ain't chicken and uh uh mm mm cause you know a lot of rat meat is posing as chicken you know that you guys know that right you know that right a lot of rat meat is posed as chicken. Like a lot of uh Asian, you know, like I'm saying, let me see. See, they cook rat, you know what I'm saying, here. And this is a lot of rat, they finna cook it. You see what I'm saying? And they finna skin it. See what I'm saying? They finna cook the rat and stuff like that. And they skinning them. You see how they skin it? You see how they skin the rat meat? And see, that, that be your Chinese food. See that? They put it in that shit like oh, Yoki did the damn iguana. See that? And that's what it be looking like. Look at that. Look at that. That's rat meat. Grilled rat. With mango sauce. Fried rat with mango sauce. Who would eat that? Who would eat that? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Spin fire, please. Fire, she said, Spin, please. <laughs> who, who is that, though? You get some fried rat, some fr with mango sauce. I don't, I don't have time to be fooling with y'all. I don't have time to be fooling with y'all. I'm, I'm with, I'm with, I'm, I'm with um Gucci. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, look. Hey, hey, y'all. Ooh, chicken and frogs for you. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Put my phone down. What do you mean put my phone down? What you mean? Get the lights up, y'all.
see here we go i'm just saying Oh, I'm back. I'm back online. Oh, you, you, you hear, you, you can hear us? Okay, good. Because for some reason, I'm buffering on this side for some reason or whatever. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go. It's 2.30 in the morning. Okay, I'm going to go on and let y'all go because I, obviously they want us to go. All right, so y'all take care. All right, we'll talk about some nasty food. Uh, we'll talk about the nasty stuff later on. All right, talk to y'all later. Fire out. He say, she say, we say, I say, hearing out them points of views when I see it my way. Yes, it goes, yes, it knows, maybe so's, probably not. Shills and coulds, do's and don'ts, your woods and wants is how you rock. Politicians and religions on your house are all you written. Is you married? Is you single? Met an interest when you mingle. Turn out to be someone you into. So how long before the bed get wrinkled? Children, when they tripping, is it time out or do you whip them? Opinions and decisions, hunches, intuitions, may or may not get it. Cause people's experience different. Check the prejudice at the dope. You get the flow. Tell the truth if it's sweet or sour. Cause the hour we spitting that fire. fire.